sorry. Everybody standing, everybody standing all over the building, everybody standing. We have come into this house this morning, gathered in his name to worship our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The song says, what a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him, heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. Come on choir, what a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow. Angels bow before. Heaven and earth. Heaven and earth are God. What a mighty God. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God. Oh, my God. 
angels bow. Angels bow before heaven and earth. Heaven and earth adore him. What a, what a mighty God we serve. What a loving God. What a loving God we serve. What a loving God. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. One more time. What a mighty God. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow. Angels bow before heaven and earth. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty. What a mighty God we serve. Good morning, St. Joseph. We had an outstanding Sunday school class this morning. I just want to tell y'all that it was really, really good. It was really, really good. And I want to thank the Sunday school class for helping me this morning because that's why we fellowship together. Help one another. That's why we do it. But this is our call to worship. It's not that we got up this morning and said, I'm going to church. That God woke you up and said, I need to see you in the fellowship. So we can come together as one body in Christ and you can worship me in spirit and truth. Oh, bless his holy name. And as we continue in our call to worship, we are reminded that this is a time of prayer and praise to our God. James 4 and 7 teaches us to submit ourselves therefore to God resist resist the devil and he will flee from you. I don't know if you get that but that is a promise. That is a promise from God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father in the name of Jesus we lift our hands in humble submission to your will. We lift our hands in humble submission to your will. And we resist the devil. We resist the devil. And by the power of your Holy Spirit. And by the power of your Holy Spirit. We ask that you would cause Jesus. We ask that you would cause Jesus. To magnify himself in our midst. To magnify himself in our midst. Amen. 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 As we worship this morning. The song says total praise. Everybody, Lord, I will lift mine eyes to the hill. Everybody, Lord, and Lord. Help. 
Sister Easter Sneed, Sister Brenda Sapp, Sister Dorothy Johnson, Sister Hilda Myers, Sister Cynthia Kendricks, Brother Willie and Sister Fair, Patricia Fairbanks, Sister Gwendolyn Thomas, Sister Alberta Bowden, Reverend Theodore and Sister Mary Johnson. Brother Michael Hazel, Brother Nicholas and Sister Andrea Jiggets, Sister Jane Zett Wallace, Sister Latoya Smith, Sister Hattie Wallace, the Reverend Fred Friday King, Brother Adrian Limbrick, Brother Hobart, Hobart Fitzpatrick, Brother Bentley Porter, Sister Phyllis Luckett, Sister Cheryl Brantley, Sister Miriam Ruth Newsom, Cora Clayton, Jennifer Rainey, Reverend Matthew Quarterman, Quentin McCall, 
Daryl Stringfield Jr., Vanetta Jackson, Sister Michelle Walker, Brother Quint Wallace, Linda Wright, the Hill family, Sherry Cox, Sister Ramel Howard, Bobby Tucker Jr., Valencia Sutton, Brother Ivory Godwin, Brother Michael Sutton, Lois Smith, Sister Melody Tapley's sister, Sonia Queen, Trey Hobby, Brother Carlos Robinson, and Jarius Campbell, uh, uh, Sister Campbell's grandson. Yeah, sister, yeah. It's, uh, he was in a motorcycle accident in Maryland. So let's keep him lifted up in our prayers. The Lord is the light of and salvation. The Lord is my light and my, safe, my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Whom shall I be afraid? For in times of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall uh, set me upon a rock. We all know that rock is Jesus the Christ. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to wait on the Lord and be of good cheer. And he shall strengthen my heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Father, we thank you today for Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, knowing that without him we can do absolutely nothing. He started the story, wrote the book. He's going to end the book. He's with us all the way through the chapters of our life. So we want to thank you for that. Thank you for being so merciful towards us. We, we're going to lift up your word and, because you are the light of our life. You are the salvation that we were thirsty for. So we just want to say thank you. Thank you for being so merciful. Thank you for being so long-suffering towards us, even in our disobedience. We just want to thank you today. Because you are God all by yourself. So we thank you. Forgive us of our confessed sins. Even now as we are confessing them in our closet. And Lord you know all about the prayer list. Nothing hides from you. Your word said that you cut everything down through the bones and the marrow. And you see everything open. So this is your prayer list, and these are your people on this list. Touch them as only you can. Breathe on the Fairbanks family, Lord, right now. We're going we're gonna to wait on you because you have the answer to everything. Breathe on Jarius Campbell, Lord. Uh, we're going to wait on you. We're going to wait on you. Breathe on this prayer list. We're going to wait on you and we're going to be of good cheer because we trust in you and we trust in your word. So thank you today. Even in times like this, we want to look to the heavens, look to the hills from which cometh our help and all of our help come from you, Lord. So thank you. Breathe on St. Joseph now as only you can. Bring us closer together in the fellowship that you desire of your church. Help us to love one another. Help us to forgive one another. Help us. We thank you now because the help is already here. All we have to do is be obedient to your word. So thank you. Breathe on our pastor as only you can. Continue to bless him. Touch him as only you can. Uh, help him, just continue to help him so he can help us, so we can help others. Even in the hardships, Lord, we want to say thank you. Even in the struggles, 
When we're tired of struggling, you're holding us. And we want to say thank you for holding us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. We just want to say thank you. Yes. Bless us now. And after we get through hearing your word today, yes. our prayer is that you will save and add to your church yes, as such should be saved. Is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. And let the church say together. Amen. Amen. Praise and praise God. the Lord.
anything for you? Yeah. Did he wake you up this morning? Yeah. Amen. He's worthy of our praise. He's worthy of our praise. I'm so grateful and thankful to stand before you this morning to read God's scripture. Turn with me to Philippians chapter 4. <clears throat> And we have been instructed to read verses 4 through 9 in a response manner. Again, Philippians chapter 4, beginning at verse 4 through verse 8 in a response manner, and then verse 9 altogether. You know, this morning it was a beautiful church school class taught by a prolific teacher. Jacob had taught us so much in that lesson. In that wrestle, <laughs> he, um, uh, as kids in the country, we, we wrestle all the time. Just playing. We do that all the time. About two minutes, I'm done. I'm tapping out. But Jacob, <laughs> rascal, he's worth holding on to. His promises is worth holding on to. Amen. His faithfulness is worth rolling on to. His righteousness it's worth holding on to. Amen. Jacob knew what he was doing. I'm not going to let you go. <laughs> Today, beginning at verse 4, it reads, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, Whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things, all those things, and receive, and heard, and seen in me, do and God, peace, shut up. Oh, bless his name. Oh, bless his name. And do. 
we just have read the living word of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. May it be a blessing to all hearers and listeners.
take stock in his word father thank you for this day thank you for this moment father we recognize that no matter what you call us to do from the pastor all the way down we are all but human beings and so lord there's always Things that come in our heart that causes us to be alienated. So, Father, I pray now that you would forgive me of my sins. And I pray that for those that are listening on, that you would do the same for them. For at this moment, Father, I pray that you would use me as your instrument. A fallen, fallen creature that you have saved and have lifted and I pray that your word will go forth and then I pray for the hearing of those that you would allow nothing but the truth to enter into their hearts bless now even at this point for it is in our praise that we lift your son Jesus and we shall all say together, amen, and praise the Lord. Amen. Give an honor to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and to the preachers that are on the pulpit with me, Reverend Gibson and Reverend amen. Fisher. Amen. I so appreciate their loyalty and, and all that that means. Amen. And to the deacons of this church, God bless you in your positions. To the deaconesses, Amen. God bless you. Amen. To the choir, and as always, I'm always without words. I, I just say thank you for your ministry and singing. You make it very easy for someone to come and to preach. You know, amen. To the musicians. And to the drummer who is a lot of times forgotten, you can't hide, Sister Teresa, you're there. Bless your heart. To the ushers, patiently standing. Nobody cussed you out this morning, did they? Everybody was nice? Well, they had a good Saturday night then. <laughs> you don't cuss them out no more? No more. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. To the multimedia ministry, doing a great job, and to the um, hospitality ministry who is overlooked a lot. God bless you. And to any other ministries that are uh, in service, nurses, oh, usually I forget them. God Amen. bless you. Bless Amen. you. Yeah. And to everyone else, brother, do I see your cooking uniform on or you just got to, we cooking something today? Oh, man, I thought well, something good is going to be cooked today. Well, bless your heart. <laughs> Pastor, how you doing this morning? I am doing very well. Good, good. I'm doing very well. Good. I'm trying to, to, to gather myself together. You know, I, I made my wife mad last night. Well, and take so, her out today. Take her out today. Yeah. I, I told her I was wrong, and I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> So I guess I gotta take her out and bless her, you know. I mean, you know, we all make mistakes. 
We all make mistakes. We just have to admit it, get past it, keep on going. In the, in the house of God, ain't no such thing as separation, divorce, uh -uh. nothing else. Uh -uh. If nothing else, go find you a spot that you can get an hour or two apiece. Yes. Yes. Let your spirit get together yes. and come back together. And boy, yes. Yes. the makeup then is wonderful. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> I got to teach. Yes. That's right, shucks. If y'all thought that I was some person that was dropped out of heaven and that's why y'all voted, no, uh, no, no. I'm subjected to the same temptations and stuff that every one of you are subjected to. But I know where to go. That may be the difference. I hope that all of y'all are following me. I know where to go. There's a man named Jesus <laughs> that, that can make everything Amen. all right, no matter Amen. what it is, even when you it. wrong. You better say it. Amen. Lord, thank you. Amen. Take that one to the bank. I'm telling Amen. you. All right. Give an honor also to the wonderful family of St. Joseph. Amen. You are so wonderful, so precious, and I love every single one of you. Amen. And even those that are in Facebook, God bless you. I would love to see you in the fellowship. Amen. There's a lot of us that are not here. Don't, don't worry about that, though. God is blessing. Amen. But, Amen. You know, they're looking on Facebook and everything else. That's fine. You know, God will touch their hearts when it's time. But the fellowship is so wonderful. Yeah. In, in case some of you may want to know what is our motto for the year or ongoing is the teaching of God's unadulterated word first and the growing of the fellowship second. All right. Amen. The Amen. word is what oh, the gathering is all about. All right. Amen. But just as equal to that is the joy of the fellowship. That's right. Amen. 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 Okay, I've wasted enough of your time, but I wanted to recognize my wife Amen. who is sitting there you still mad at me, sweetheart? Amen. <laughs> All right, okay. All right. All right. There's my brother sitting there, brother in the Lord. God bless you, man. Coming out of Georgia and his lovely wife. And my sweetheart. How you doing, darling? That's my other woman. <laughs> God bless you. God bless you. Oh, for those of you who don't know, never heard me kidding no more, my mother-in-law. No, I got no wife and no concubine. Ain't no first and second and third ladies. Don't, don't, don't get that going. No, 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 no. no there's only one. And I, and I keep her mad at me practically all the time. So, you know. This morning, I want to talk to you from the word of God with this thought in mind. The Father's gift is Jesus. The Father's gift is Jesus. And, and you know, first of all, when we hear the word gift, we have to recognize a gift is, is something that is offered, but it doesn't become a gift until you receive it. You know, there are a lot of times that you probably have given gifts and people may smile and say thank you, but it goes in the closet and never used. Doesn't benefit them. But a gift, once it's given though, cannot be returned, not legitimately. I mean, I know sometimes, you know, we are Indian givers, we give and take back. Or we give a gift to somebody that's close to us because it's something we want to use. But God is not like that. He's given us a gift and that gift that has been given, he will never, never take from us. And that gift is the Lord Jesus Christ. Now with that gift, what he is trying to do is, is prepare our lives so that we can be joyful children of God. That's the whole purpose. He wants us to be joyful because, see, we cannot be magnets drawing people to the kingdom if that can't see the joy of Christ in us, who wants to follow somebody that's mad all the time? 
Who wants to follow somebody that's got a, a lip all twisted up and, 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 and every time you see them, they got something negative running out of their lips and just upset with the world and, and everything bothers them. Who wants to follow that? And I can tell you, nobody does. So God knows that. So what he does, he gives us his son, Jesus Christ, not only to save us, but while we are yet in this world to where we can have a life that is joyous, a life of contentment, a life that can overcome anything that comes in our path. And that gift is the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, th th there are three things that I'm going to bring out. Uh, I always like to have some points you can handle, hold on to. The very first thing, cease from worrying. Cease from worrying. Stop worrying. The second thing, connect and communicate with God. And then the third thing is the result of all of that. That's where he grants us this comfort that there is no way to explain. The Bible tells us that, that it, it, the world can't even understand it. It is so beautiful until sometimes you can't understand it. Haven't you seen it when, when things seem to have fallen all apart, like there is no answer to it at all? And then God just miraculously all of a sudden does something to just carry you through all of it and you say to yourself, Lord, how in the world did you do that? I was so worried about what was going on, I didn't even take the time to say, help me, but you showed up and carried me on through it. There's a comfort that brings, that comes in our lives from the Lord Jesus Christ that even we at times cannot even understand. All we can say is thank you, Jesus. That, that, that's all. We don't know how to, how to explain it to them or how to break down the thank you. We just say, thank you, Jesus. Because if you hadn't showed up, I would have been in a terrible, terrible position. So cease from worrying. Stop worrying. Connect and communicate with God. And the comfort of the Lord Jesus Christ would be present in your beings, in your minds, in your heart. And everywhere that you move, people can see it and sense it and know there's a difference in you that's not in others that they're seeing. In our scripture, verse 4, the Bible says, Rejoice in the Lord always. Not just sometimes, always. It's, it's just simple to comprehend. Not just when you feel like it or not just when things are going good. You know, Sister, Sister uh, Porter, Sister B.B. Porter, affectionately called B.B., she said something very, very profound. Well, it was profound, but it was from the teaching in, in the Bible study one time. She says she has learned to start to praising God before she sees the blessing. Amen. When there's a need in her life that she started seeing, she says she starts to praising God at that time because she just knows that God is in some way is going to show up. Amen. Years ago, when, when, when her life was dragging and struggling and she would be praying and stuff, you know, uh, God, I mean, he just did miraculous things that the church saw coming in that, in that young, young lady's life. You know, knowing that God is able, God will, and, and God will every time perform. So he says, rejoice in him always, always. And then in verse 5, he says, let your moderation be known to all men. That's where a lot of times we fall into error because we <laughs> don't let our moderation be known. We let our excessiveness be known. You know, God has given us liberties that, that the world can't even understand. They, they don't know how we can be saved by the glory and by the grace of God, but yet still God has given us liberties to enjoy a life, a world that he has put yes, into sir. place. Yes, sir. Not the world system, but right. the world was created for us, not for the devil. 
But instead of showing our moderations, we show our excessiveness. God is cautioning us to let your moderation be known unto all men. And then the Bible starts. He says, be careful for nothing. Stop worrying. Cease from worrying. The Bible is teaching us, don't be anxious for anything. You know, God has promised us throughout the scriptures what he would do in our lives. He's already given us that promise to be anxious saying that, Lord, I don't believe you. Even though I see it in your word, I don't trust you. Yeah. Lord, you must be lying to me. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, that's what our actions is saying when we start worrying. Wow. Amen. There's no need to, to, to think that God is going to take care of it, but yet and still I'm aware about it all along. You know, either you're going to give it to God and let him handle it or just worry about it and just get yourself sick and toe all down. But that's not what God wants. He wants for us to be happy. That's what he says. Rejoice in the Lord always. Always, no matter what's going on, because he's going to take care of the mess that's trying to slide in to cause you to be upset. God's going to take care of that. So he says, don't, don't worry. Don't be anxious. Don't be upset. Don't be distrusting me. He says to us, stop, stop doubting me. Stop distrusting my words. Stop, stop doubting me. Doubting me says that you're calling me a liar. And then secondly, God says to us in his word, he says, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be known unto to the Lord. Connect and communicate. Communication says what? When you're on the phone and you call somebody, you don't just sit there and talk, 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 and don't let anybody respond to you. Right. Communication says that there's something that you say and then you listen for, for a response. Something you say and you listen to a response. Right. Well, the same thing with God. God is real and God is alive, my yes, brothers and sisters. And what he wants and what he desires is our attention yes, and our trust in him. When we go in our secret closets, all we go in is begging, Lord, give me this. Lord, take care of this. Lord, move this out of the way. Lord, cause this one to fall down and break their neck. Lord, do this. Lord, do that. And don't stop for one second to see if God's got anything to say back. He's trying to talk to you, but God will not overtalk you. According to the Bible, and especially in the Old Testament, we hear all the time that he speaks with a soft, quiet voice. Amen. Amen. If we're sitting there and just, just talking and talking and talking, we can't hear him talking back to us. When we're in our secret closets, when we're praying, take a moment and quieten down and listen for his sweet voice. Listen for the, for the peacefulness that will come in your spirit in hearing him talking back to you. Amen. It may take a little bit for you to get used to that because you're so used to boycotting the, uh, the conversation. But as you start to learn, you'll start to hearing him. You'll start to discerning his, his sweet voice. And when he speaks, I'm telling you, your soul seems to be just washed with with. with, with with, with an experience that, 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 that's unbelievable. God will speak to you. He wants to speak to you. You are his child. The same way when you see your children interacting and caring certain ways and, and you wanting to talk with them, you want them to listen and you want them to respond back so you can tell that they heard what you're teaching them. Well, God wants the same thing with his child. There's no difference. But we won't give him that opportunity. We won't, we won't communicate. We'll connect, but we won't communicate with him. Start communicating with him. And I'm going to tell you something. You'll start to seeing a difference in your life because you'll start to hear in directions that he's given. If you're worrying about whether you should let that scoundrel back in the house, talk to the Lord. He'll let you know. He'll let you know. If he wants you to change the locks or nail the door shut, he'll tell you. He'll put a, a, your spirit into a position to know how God is speaking to you. Yes, sir. 
But I'm going to tell you something. If you're a child of God, God wants reconciliation. He, he's not going to agree with you in wanting to destroy. God is a God of reconciliation. And we are his children, so we are children of reconciliation. As a matter of fact, in the scriptures, the one thing that every single one of his children has is the gift of reconciliation. Every one of us has that. It's the problem that we don't, we don't, we don't use it. Every one of us, we allow pride to take care of our situation too much. We let pride to take over. And, and once we do, then, then, then we, we can't do anything that's pleasing to God because we're right there with self all standing out there. All right, all right, amen. Listen to him. Communicate with him. And you'll start to hearing a difference. Amen. And pray with expectation. You're his child. Pray knowing that he's going to answer your prayers. Amen. Don't be amazed when he does because, we, you know, all of us, oh, Oh, are you for real? No, no, he will answer your prayers. And when you see him doing it, just give him praise. Instead of being amazed and knocked off your feet, just as Lord, you being God in my life. You are the God that I've expected you to be. That's what he wants. He wants to be praised by our acknowledgement of his awesome power in our lives. Pray with expectation. Know that once you have prayed and you turn it over to God, that God is going to deal with it. He's going to take care of it. And he will show himself. Pray using his words. Pray, pray back his words. Yeah. One of the most beautiful things you can do when you go in your secret closet, take your Bible with you. His promises are written down. Pray, pray to him back his promises. Amen. God says, I cannot deny myself. If he's promised you, he'll make it come to fruition. All of his promises to us, all of them are yes and amen. That's biblical. Not some of them, all of them. And so if you're praying with him, if you're communicating with him, and you communicate him, give his word back to him, he cannot do anything but acknowledge it by his own words. By his own words. Isn't it wonderful to know if, 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 if your husband said, I'm going to do such and such, and when you go back to him, you say, baby, you said such and such. It's kind of hard to say, uh-uh, no, I ain't, uh-uh. No, if you've already said it and you're a just person, now you got to be you know, somebody that's, that, that's honest and just with some integrity. But if you have promised it in your spirit, that's all you want to do is to complete it, yeah. is to accomplish it. God is no different. Amen. We are his bride. Amen. We are his people. We are his children. And he wants wonderful things for us. Kids, if you want to get good grades in school, I'm telling you, start to asking the Holy Spirit to, to, to guide you when you're studying. You know, don't, don't, don't think that you can close your books up and then go and say, Lord, help me now. No, no. If nothing has entered here, nothing can come out. The Bible says the Holy Spirit will bring back to your remembrance that which you have put there. If you haven't put nothing there, there's nothing to bring back. God is faithful to keep his promise, but there are things that we must do. And God will bless us beyond measure. God's communication, again, is always through his word. Always through his word. He don't drop nothing out of heaven. According to Hebrews chapter 1, he speaks to us now through his son, which is his word. Amen. Don't, don't let nobody fool you around here about, yes. I had a dream, I had a spirit, or, yeah. or the Lord slapped me in the face and knocked me to my knees and showed me that and all of that. Be careful. Yeah, amen. Be careful. Amen. But what you can trust is his word. His word will never fail. Matter of fact, the scripture says that everything in this world will be destroyed except for his word. Not a dot, not a tittle, not even a smudge of his word will be destroyed. But everything else will be destroyed. If you want anything that you can put your trust on, that you can lean on, let it be the word of God. And then God says that if you, if, if you stop worrying, 
which then says you put in your trust in me. If you connect with me and then communicate with me, he says the result of it is that I will comfort you with my peace. Yes, sir. Oh man, how many of us would give anything just for peace in your life? Yes. Just, 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 just peace. Yes. Just, just peace. Yes. How many? Oh yes, I see hands going up. Yes. Just, just, just peace. If nothing else, some would give up everything that they have just, just for peace. But, but, but Jesus has promised us that. He has promised us, uh, us that. Hearts and minds are comforted by Jesus. When we stop worrying and when we communicate to him our needs and give him thanksgiving in the midst of our supplication, he will comfort us. He will start to granting us the desires of our heart. And not, not in our prayer just submitting supplications, begging for stuff, but giving thanksgiving. Even if he hasn't blessed yet, just trust the fact that sooner or later he's going to get around to it. It, it, it is his timing, not ours. He don't look at you and say, okay, when do you want it? Right. That's nowhere in scripture how God lays it out. God says when the fullness of the time comes, it's when I will show up and when I will bless you. Yes. Until that time, we wait patiently doing what he's calling for us to do. Yes. Isn't that a paradox? Waiting while we're doing, yes. waiting while we are doing, yes. that, but that's what he's called for us to do. Only God can make comments like that. But, but he knows that, but that our blessings come from doing what he's called for us to do. And then God will present us with eternal, eternal comfort. Amen. Eternal comfort. Amen. Comfort that will carry us all the way through yes. eternity. Yes. Once you have allowed Jesus to come alive in your life, yes. once you have given yourself over to him, once you have allowed him to become Lord of your life, that's when you can start recognizing the peace that we all seek for. Not, not from gurus, not from mad or man, not, not from any of the worldly stuff that some of us go and try to root out. None of that. But through the Lord Jesus Christ and his promises, if we would just stop worrying, stop distrusting him, and if we would start to connect him, and communicating with him, then that comfort, that comfort of peace that we're looking for. Look at verse nine or verse eight. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, uh -huh. look at that, whatsoever things are true, uh -huh. throw out all of that trash and just focus your mind on what's true, what's real. Amen. Whatsoever things are honest, you know, haven't there been times in your life when you kind of know that there's been a little bit slight dishonesty? Yes, I'm just giving you the benefit of the yes, doubt. Sir. Yes, sir. And, and if you're a child of God, you, yes. your conscience just, just mess yes, you. It just yes. keeps bothering you. Yes. You know, like last night when I made my wife mad. Mm -hmm. You know, it bothered me all night long. It, it might have been a little thing or whatever, just, you know, a little bit of thing. Yeah. Big thing to her, little thing to me. You know? yeah. But when you try to hold on to that little bit of dishonesty, it yeah. causes you discomfort like you cannot believe. You yes. cannot enjoy yes. the comfort yes. and peace yes. that Jesus has promised you yes. right. when you're still trying to hold on to yes. that yes. piece of disturbance that's in your life. Yes. Whatsoever things are just. Yes. Whatever things are just. Whatsoever things that are pure. Whatsoever things that are of a good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. Get that mess out of your mind. Flush all of that anger. Flush all of that, all of that mess that's in your mind, all of that revenge that's in your mind, all of the stuff that you want to, I want to get rid of her. I want to cut him away. I want them gone. I want them, no, instead embrace and love and let the spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ just permeate. Focus your mind on things that are godly, not on things of this world, not on things that your flesh is trying to get you to do, but things that's on God. And you'll start to seeing the presence of the Lord in, in, in presence of his peace because that's what we want the most peace in our minds and in our hearts. And then finally in verse 9, those things which you have both heard and received. 
oh, excuse me, things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me do. 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 Just not see and say, oh, those are good virtues, those are good things. Paul is saying, do. Do it. And then he finishes up and says, then the peace, the God of peace, shall be with you. The God of peace shall be with you. When you are following things that are peaceful, when you're following things that you know that's of the Lord Jesus Christ, if you're a child of God and the Holy Spirit lives within you, let me let you, let me, let me, let me give you a little hint. When you are in your secret closet, when you're talking to the Lord, you know when things ain't right. Whether you want to agree with it or not, the Holy Spirit will show you that it's not right. But we are so stubborn that we still want to do it our way. That's why we're not seeing the complete peace, the pure peace that God is talking about. Jesus said he will comfort us with his peace. Stop worrying. Start praying. And God will bless you beyond measure. Now, we know this because Jesus, that's where Jesus came into all of this. That's when Jesus showed himself. He said to the Father, he says, Father, give me a body so that I can go down and, and, and save these knuckleheads. They're, 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 they're our children, but they're acting like they don't have any parent at all. They don't know what's going on. They're going here and there, and they're worshiping stumps and rocks and, and animals and everything except the holy God. Give me a body. And let me go down. And I will demonstrate to them. I will show them. I will show them. I will teach them. So that they can receive what I teach them. And then they can do what they see in me. And so they can have the peace that you have stored up for them. And so that's what he did. He came into this world. And the Bible says that. He was in this world for 30 years before he even began his ministry. But in those 30 years, according to the word of God, he committed no sin. He kept the law completely, not parts or pieces of it, because the Bible says if you don't keep it all, then you are guilty of it all. And so the Bible says that he was totally innocent. He was a God man. Because only God knew what it would take to satisfy his penalty for the sins of this world. Only God. If you are upset, only you know what it would take for the other person to that's make right. it good to you. That's right. that's right. Only you do. And that's what God did. God said, you don't know how mad I really am. You don't know how full of wrath that I really am about your sin. But I'm going to send myself down in a body so that I can do what I ask you to do in the first place in keeping the law and show you that it is possible. And that's what he did. And then the last three years, he started to seeking out the lost. He started seeking out those who needed a physician. He even said in his word, he says, those of you who are not sick, I'm not come for you because you don't need a physician. You, you, don't, need, you don't need me. Right. Those of you that are so proud that you got it all together. But those of you who are broken down and, and, and have no idea where things are and what's going on, he says, that's who I came for. Those who recognize that they needed a savior, that's who I came down for. So three years he ministered, performing miracles. Went in one town and, and healed up everybody in the whole town. Was passing by with, with really apparently no intent to do anything, but he passed by a funeral possession and touched the coffin as he passed by. 
And the man in the coffin came alive and got up out of the coffin. That's the God man we're talking about. All kinds of miracles. Man blind from birth gave him sight. Man that had never walked in his life completely instantly gave him strength to stand up. Not only to stand up, but to pick up his bed and walk. Can you imagine? You nurses know that when somebody has been lame all their lives, there's what's called what atrophy, muscle atrophy or something. You know, there has to be some strengthening going on before they can even move and get up. But the Bible says immediately the man got up and not only got up, but took his bed with strength and then walked. That's the God that I'm talking about. That's the Jesus that I'm presenting to you. And many more. We could go on and on and on. As a matter of fact, look at the last verse in the last chapter of the Gospel of John. John said that if I wrote down everything that Jesus did in the, this world could not hold the books. Only a God man could have done all of that. But the world hated him. The world hated him. The Jews hated him. They hated him because he was tearing up everything that they were used to. Old traditions. Traditions. He was messing them up. They didn't like it. And they tried everything to get rid of him. One time they tried to throw him over a cliff and all of a sudden they couldn't even find him. They did everything, nothing happened. So finally they said, we got to just kill him. But they didn't have the authority. They didn't have the authority. So they went to Pilate and, and threw up all these lies. None of it stuck. Even Pilate himself said three times, read it, I find no fault in this man. Yeah. And the final time to convince them, he took a pail of water and washed his hands and demonstrated to them, this man I find no guilt in him. But they still wanted him dead because he was messing up tradition. Yeah. Yeah. So what did they do? They quit lying because they saw that wouldn't work. So they start telling the truth. This man said he the son of God. Okay, that's true. But he wouldn't defend himself. They even asked him, is that what you said? He says, that's what you say. Wouldn't defend himself. Wouldn't defend himself because being a God man, his, his, his defense could have made it to where they probably would have changed their minds. But he knew that he had to go to the cross because Paul says that if he had not gone to the cross, then we would still yet be in our sins, heading to hell with no kind of answer. Thank you, Jesus, for the cross. So he didn't say a mumbling word. He kept his mouth shut. Even when they beat him and tore his flesh all open, didn't say a mumbling word. Snatched out his beard, didn't say a mumbling word. Put, put crowns on his head, the thorns. Didn't say a mumbling word. Because he knew that he had to die for the sins of the world. And so they took him to Calvary with his cross. Even the cross was borrowed. They only made three crosses. They were going to kill Barabbas, a murderer, a seditionist, and everything else. That's what that third cross was for. But the people were so evil in their heart, they said, let this known murderer and sedition go so we can crucify this man. So they took him to Calvary. And while he was at Calvary, the Bible says that they laid him down on that cross. And, and like I've said before, I want you to listen carefully because, see, the Bible says that he died for every one of us. So if, if you were able to stand there and see him laying down on that cross, you should be seeing yourself there. Because, in fact, we were there because of... It was our sins that was upon him, not his. And if you stand close enough, you can hear the spikes as they've been nailed in his flesh. You can hear it. 
each one. And the Bible says he didn't say a mumbling word. He didn't say anything. So they nailed his hands, nailed his feet. And then they did the one thing he warned them of. The Bible said that they lifted that cross up, dropped it into a, to a hole that had been prepared to support it, which tore his flesh, I'm sure, as it fell into that hole. He still didn't say a mumbling word. But when they lifted him up, he did start the ministry because out of all the stuff, you know, we, we hear the seven sayings, but we, we sometimes overlook this one thing. Mm -hmm. This one thing, the, the, uh, a man that was a Gentile that was not saved, in other words, you can say it a devil, a man that was not saved. As he was passing by the cross, this centurion had looked up and he says, surely, <laughs> Surely, oh this must be yeah. the Son of God. Yeah. That even an unsaved man had to profess the fact that God was on the cross dying. Yeah. And he died. He did die on that cross. He died. And the Bible says that he was taken off of that cross and he was put in a bar tomb. They didn't even have a grave ready for him. And his death was so close to the, to the Sabbath, they didn't have time to fix one. So they borrowed a grave to put him in. And they put him there in that, that tomb where his body laid. And the Bible says that while his body laid for three days and three nights in that tomb, that he himself was in the inner parts of the earth, reconciling. <laughs> reconciling everything back to the Father, regaining what Adam had given up in the garden. He was reconciling all of that back to the Father. And after he had done what God had sent his son into the world to do, satisfied the penalty of all sins, because if you look at scriptures and theologically approach it, if any sin, if one sin had not been atoned, God in his righteous holiness could not have raised his son from the dead. But because every sin of the world had been paid for, every sin had been paid for, God saw fit to raise his son because his work was completed. On the third day morning, before nature itself had a chance to do its thing, before dew ever got to come on the roses as we like to sing, before nature even showed her face, the Bible said God raised his son from the dead, bodily and alive from the dead. And even after he was raised from the dead, for 40 days he ministered, showed himself to his disciples, did still impossible things, being able to go from one spot to the other at the speed of thought, going through locked doors as his disciples were hidden away, sitting by the seashore, eating fish with them to show them that indeed he was being raised, his raising from the dead was bodily and not just a spirit. That's what he told them. Look at me, I'm eating like you're eating. And the Bible says even there was one time that he showed himself to over 500. Yes, sir. At one time. Yes, sir. But then after he got through showing himself, yeah. then the Bible says on the 40th day yeah. that he ascended into heaven. And while he was ascending on a cloud, the Bible says that while the disciples were there watching him, and I'm sure they were longing in their heart our Savior is leaving us. Our Savior is leaving us. These two men in white that were standing there told him, why are you standing looking up into heaven? You got work to do. Get to stepping. I'm paraphrasing. Yeah, yeah. But, but that's what he said. Yeah. Because in the same way that he is going up into heaven, he's coming back again. Yes, sir. And you got work to do work. before he comes back. And so the end of the gospel says to you, and this is the gospel of grace, the end of the gospel says to you that if you don't know him, 
and the pardon of your sin, that his return is not going to be one of a joyous nature. It's not going to be a, of a joyous nature. So the question is, do you know him? Do, do you personally know him? Have you personally asked him to come into your life? It's one thing to have a million dollars in the bank, but never cash the check to use it. Yeah, yeah. Remember some years ago, this woman, that, this was when, before they tore all this stuff down in Black Bottom, it was a rooming house. Yeah. And this woman died from, from exposure, from, from, matter of fact, she froze to death because she didn't have any kerosene in her, in her uh, heater. This is a true story. She was one that did a lot of begging around. And what they found out is that she had plenty of money in the bank. But she just didn't get it to even get something simple as heating oil to keep herself warm and died. I pray that's not going to be any of you. Because the, the penalty of your sins have been paid for. It's in the bank. It's in the bank. Just receive it. Believe that he is the son of God, yes, that he died yes, for your sins. Yes, That's sir. all, by faith. Yes, sir. Don't try to figure it out by faith. Yes, sir. That's the gospel of grace. Yes, sir. Let us stand. Somebody here today that don't have a church home, born again, but don't have a church home. Know the Lord Jesus Christ, but don't have a church home. The Bible tells us, matter of fact, it commands us to not forsake the assembling of ourselves as some do. Every one of us need a church home to where we grow together. The fellowship is so important. If you don't have a church home, I'm going to tell you, there's no church better than this one. I'm telling you. We're not the worst in the world, but there's not no better than this one. Why don't you come and be a part of this family? Why don't you come? If there's anyone that do not have a church home, the invitation is being extended to you at this time. Just come. Jesus. Jesus. Communicate with God. He'll give you the peace that surpasses everything. My, my.
Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. I needed to hear that. Let us now prepare our hearts for worship and giving. Amen. And, and Father, we thank you today for this opportunity to give back to you. Bless this offering that we're about to receive for the upbuilding of your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. amen.
have I have one more thing that the pastor gave me to read. It's a thank you card. It says, thank you. The Mitchell Prater family wishes to thank you for your prayers, phone calls, and our family at this time. Again, we say thank you. God's richest blessings to St. Joseph Missionary Baptist Church. Thank you from the Mitchell family, uh, Mitchell Prater family. Amen. Amen. That being said, come on, Pastor. I just want to remind the Brotherhood, Saturday at 4 p.m., that's on the 24th, we'll be having a Brotherhood meeting here at the church. 4 p.m. on Saturday. Please, brothers, show up. Amen. Please, let's not forget that, brothers. Let's, let's support our brother in that. That's this coming Saturday at 4 o'clock. And um, you're going to serve us dinner and everything at that, right? No, no, no. You're not going to serve me. Okay, all right. Okay, be like that. All right. Come in a way. Eat before you leave home, okay? <laughs> I'm so glad to see my family, my brother and my sister. And... and uh, what should I call her? <laughs> my woman, my mother-in-law, my sweetheart. She is such a darling, I'm telling you. One of my greatest supporters. Amen. So good to, to see you all. Thank you for coming to, to support us. That was a nice surprise, nice surprise. Um, with All the way from Blackshear, that's right. Amen. All the way from Blackshear. That's it. Oh, my wife's speaking to me again. Hey, Amen. Hey, 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 praise hey, the Lord. Hey, hey. <laughs> That's all right. She'll be mad at me again for the day down or something. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Would it be okay if I asked Pastor not to bring, if they bring their phones in, to please turn them off. Because no matter what you're saying, if that phone goes off, my mind going to go toward My mind just not as long as other people. Okay. So my mind going to go toward that phone call. You can bring them in because some people have to, but please cut your phone off. Can I say that? You can say that. Okay, thank you. You can say it. You can say it. You got better ears than mine. I haven't heard one go off. Yeah, but, but that's good to hear. I mean, that's, that, that's just common courtesy. So... Let's, let's listen to Sister uh, Porter, okay? Any other announcements? Oh yes, don't forget, Tuesday night at seven o'clock, all ministry leaders, I need to meet with you. We need to find out where we are, what ministries are being covered, uh, what our plans are gonna be. Uh, we, need to, we, we need to hit the ground running, amen? Because, you know, God needs us to be working in this vineyard, I'm telling you. It's one thing to come and praise the Lord and rejoice, but we are called to do, not just to hear and, and, and say, okay? Amen. So Tuesday night at 7 o'clock, please, all amen. ministry leaders that want to be, stay ministry leaders, amen? Amen. 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 We don't want no ghost ministry leaders. We want bodies. Amen. Anything else? Anything else? Well, looks like we've done what God has asked. And by the way, the card, in case y'all was wondering, I heard the, but it's from Sister Del Deltra, Deltra Prater, her and her family. That's where the card is coming, from the death of her brother. Amen. She's thanking St. Joseph uh, for what you've done, the calls and cards. And uh, the district leader, Deacon Luckett, great job. And, all right. With that, let us please stand to receive our benediction, and we can head out from here.
remember that we gain nothing from worrying. God is in control. Let us trust him. Father, thank you for your word. It's all about your word being preached and your word entering the hearts of your people. Now as we are taught and convinced that you are in control, that we need to stop worrying and trusting you. We pray now that you would present yourselves in our lives with your promise that as we do that and we connect and communicate with you, that you would grant us the peace that the world cannot understand. Thank you for that truth. And now unto him who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the everlasting covenant, it is to he that we lift we pray and want to keep us until we're together again as a family in the house of God and all of God's people shall say together, Amen and praise.